Long regarded as one of the most compelling weight classes in the sport, the lightweight division currently plays host to some of the most exciting participants in the industry. Boxing observers far and wide have heralded this new crop as the reincarnation of the Four Kings era that captivated the world over four decades ago. But in a time where the best very much do not fight the best, any claims of a new golden generation must be done with caution. Recent developments, however, have promoted an air of optimism, and an imminent clash on May 20th is set to contribute a very important chapter in the division's history. The highly regarded, the reigning, undefeated, lightweight champion of the world! Devon, the Dream Haney, currently sits as the undisputed lightweight champion, possessing all four of the major world titles. The 24-year-old has been on a unique path since turning professional in Mexico, intelligently maneuvering and picking the locks of a razzle-dazzle sports industry. He's now uncovered the career-defining opportunity against a pound-for-pound -pound great, who himself is on the hunt for redemption. People, you got to understand, this guy, Lomachenko, is a legend in the sport. For the best part of a decade, Vasily Lomachenko was widely considered to be the most complete fighter in the game. A remarkable array of offensive striking combined with an elusive defense saw him become a three-weight champion in record fashion. An unexpected blip against another rising lightweight, however, risks all that he has built in a sport that can quickly forget even the most decorated of champions. Teofimo Lopez just beat Vasily Lomachenko. Two extraordinary fighters at opposing ends of their life cycles. For one, it could be the star-making fight to begin an illustrious journey of super fights with immense rewards. And for the other, an attempt to rewind the clock and achieve the final peak to close the book on a remarkable boxing career. Welcome to the Devon Haney versus Vasily Lomachenko fight countdown. Although the lightweight division is currently under the control of the young Devon Haney, there's no better way to begin this story than by recapping the extraordinary journey of its former ruler. Vasily Lomachenko. But occasionally you have a chance to see a special kind of skillful fighter. And in Lomachenko, Roy, I think that's what we see. Considered one of the greatest amateur boxers in the entire history of the sport, the Ukrainian won consecutive gold medals in both the Olympics and the World Championships. Gold medalist and Olympic champion representing Ukraine. And when he graduated into the paid ranks as a featherweight in 2013, his esteemed reputation preceded him, whereby a world title in only his third professional bout would be captured against the highly regarded Gary Russell Jr. A few successful defenses later, a jump to his second weight class to capture another world title was completed in spectacular fashion against Roman Martinez. Becoming the sport's quickest ever two-weight world champion, Lomachenko doubled down on his dominance with outstanding victories over Nicholas Walters, Jason Sosa, Miguel Mariaga, and the Cuban legend Guillermo Rigondeau. And Lomachenko has made mind-bending abilities rarely before seen in the ring. Exemplified in dazzling footwork, impeccable defense, and fluent combination punching. The five foot seven Ukrainian by now was being considered one of the best pound for pound fighters in the entire sport and justifying every bit of the hype his amateur background created. Fantastic, fantastic uppercut. Amazing uppercut. Began that series of punches. 
But if there was one biting observation from critics, it was the lack of an elite opponent on his resume. And thus came the decision to jump up another division, to seek out bigger, more threatening opponents to compensate for the skill disparity often displayed in his fights. Like that right there. Oh my God, I mean, he's toying with oh, Nicholas is, Walters. This is amazing. What, what's good? His lightweight campaign began by challenging the WBA champion, Jorge Linares. The Venezuelan great was himself a three-weight world champion and the only opponent to match Lomachenko in hand speed and combination punching, as well as handing him his first and only knockdown in his career. In what was otherwise a near-perfect performance, Lomachenko quickly recovered and returned the favor in the 10th round with an attack to the body. Now the WBA lightweight champion of the world, Lomachenko was marking the 135-pound division as his new home. It would be this weight class where he would attempt to cement his legacy. And the newfound mission to become undisputed made him set his sights on the division's other titleists. So here we go to unify the lightweight belts. The WBO belt was immediately captured against Jose Pedraza, followed by a quick mandatory defense against Anthony Crawler. Yesterday we met with him and he goes down on the hook. A competitive 12-round decision against Luke Campbell for the vacant WBC belt then put Lomachenko in touching distance of his undisputed dream. Three out of the four world titles were in his possession. The consensus number one in the division and now widely considered as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the entire sport. The man known as Loma, the feeling, The acquisition of the WBC world title in the summer of 2019 is when the May 20th combatants first started sharing the headlines. <laughs> As the new WBC champion, Lomachenko's mandatory challenger came in the form of Devon Haney, who at the time was a 22-0 contender patiently waiting for his breakthrough opportunity. So we made a decision to go down a WBC route because Devin Haney wanted to fight Vasily Lomachenko. He wanted his shot of greatness. The convoluted policies of the WBC, however, promoted Lomachenko to its franchise status. The organization's method of rewarding champions they deem to be exceptional representatives of their brand. Or, in the eyes of the cynics, granting them power to bypass mandatory obligations. You cannot force a major champion in something that is not just. Because that champion wants to fight big challenges, big uh, uh, fights, big events for the growth of the sport, the industry, and, and the fans. It then meant that a disgruntled Devon Haney would be elevated to the WBC's regular champion status, a ploy, he argued, by the opposing team to avoid facing him in the ring. So we did everything right, we got to the mandatory position, and now you're blocked. You cannot get to Vasily Lomachenko. But in the eyes of Vasily Lomachenko, chasing the only remaining lightweight title that so far had eluded him was his primary goal. Now I want, I want just unificate for all titles. I want to be undisputed world champion. And in a decision that would ultimately end his reign of the division, saw to unification with the then IBF champion, Tiafimo Lopez. Loma is on his way out. I'm on my way in. I'm not going to have a 126 pounder come out here and just try to take over on me. Lomachenko's a diva. That's why I look at him. He's like, he's a diva. He's a, he's a b Unapologetically provocative and fiercely talented, the Brooklyn-born puncher was intent on ripping up the script. And from the build-up to the fight itself, the entire saga proved to be a jarring experience for the unified champion. At this point right now, with a half minute to go in round number five, Lopez has thrown 174 punches. Lomachenko has thrown 40. Go, but right now, it's not safe enough for Loma to let his hands go, and that's why he's not throwing a lot. Lomachenko, later revealed to be harboring a long-term shoulder injury, failed to get a foothold in the first half of the fight. And despite taking back control in the second portion, couldn't do enough to beat a Lopez, who employed the ideal game plan to neutralize and frustrate the 4-1 to -one favorite. The takeover! Teofimo Lopez! 
the sensational but volatile aura of Tiafimo Lopez would inevitably rub off onto the division itself, and the once presumed stable reign of Lomachenko was instead replaced by a turbulent 12-month period of fight delays and another surprise changing of the guard. George Cambosis Jr., despite being a huge underdog, was suddenly in possession of three of the four major world titles. And with Lopez's departure from the division, and Vasily Lomachenko occupied by the unrest in his native Ukraine, the Australian was now the hottest prize in a ruthlessly talented lightweight division. Patiently waiting in the shadows was Devin the Dream Haney who by now was quickly learning from the political trappings of the sport and manoeuvred himself into a prime position to challenge for Cambosos' trio of belts. Up until this moment, the young star preferred to manage his career himself, limiting his contracts with promoters and TV networks to short-term co-promotional deals but in doing so was prevented from securing high-profile fights against opponents from other promotional stables, who deemed him too much risk for too little reward. You've got, in my opinion, the best young fighter in the world over there in Devin Haney. Right? Okay. Okay. So yes. Devin never gets a shot at Lomachenko. That may very well be because he signed with the wrong guy. The decision was then made in March of 2022 to join Top Rank, one of the leading promotional forces in the sport, and one that would guarantee him a shot at the newly crowned George Cambosis. Why are you confident you can dethrone this man, George Cambosis? Uh, because there's nothing that he can do in the ring that's better than me. Devin Haney was now on the verge of becoming the undisputed lightweight champion. But the journey to get to this position was long and meticulous. Starting boxing at the age of seven, the aspiring amateur amassed an impressive record of 130 wins in 138 fights. Along the way, he intermingled with renowned boxing personalities that inspired him to victories in several national tournaments, including two youth national championships at 15 and 16 years of age. His successful ventures made him the favorite in his weight class to represent the United States at the 2016 Olympics. But a last minute rule change requiring participants to be at least 19 years of age forced the teenager to dash his Olympic dreams. Um, yes, that is a reason. That's why I'm not waiting for the uh, next Olympics after, after 2016. That's why I'm not going to wait. Because why would I stay amateur when I could just go pro and be making money for it? Guided by the watchful eye of his father, Haney decided instead to turn professional in 2015. And with a minimum age requirement to fight in the US, as well as the decision to reject long-term promoter contracts, it meant that many of Haney's early fights took place in the harsh arenas of Mexico. There, he enhanced his Spartan-like dedication to the sport with a fierce competitiveness that carried even into sparring sessions. Invaluable gym experience with established professionals such as Sean Porter, Amir Khan, and even Floyd Mayweather helped develop Devon Haney into one of the most versatile and well-rounded prospects in the sport. <laughs> Eventually, he would earn a spot on Showtime's Showbox, the premium channel's proving ground for potential future champions. And a few dominant performances later caught the interest of British promoter Eddie Hearn, who had just entered the American market and was on the hunt for fresh recruits. Under his partnership with Matchroom USA, Devin Haney delivered his first eye-catching performance to make wider boxing audiences take notice. With the energetic promotional mouthpiece of Eddie Hearn, 
There was no better time to deliver a vicious knockout to help mount a stronger campaign to challenge for a world title. Devin Haney is the real deal, and he just proved that on the big stage. Lightweights, beware. And sitting high in the WBC rankings, Haney was granted a final eliminator against Zawur Abdullayev. A win here would earn him a shot at Vasily Lomachenko, who just days before was crowned the new WBC champion. Fully aware of the prize ahead of him, the young contender delivered another dominant performance, forcing the opposing corner to pull the Russian out after four punishing rounds of action. And this one has been waved off. The referee has, has come in and waved this one over. After securing his mandatory position, Haney's persistence for a Lomachenko showdown started catching fire. And in normal circumstances, his desire to secure the fight would be on it. But the confusing decision from the WBC to promote the Ukrainian to franchise status meant that a dissatisfied Haney then became the traditional WBC champion without earning it in the ring. And with Lomachenko's reign eventually falling at the hands of a fellow rising star in Teofimo Lopez, Haney was forced to progress a career lacking the marquee scalp he desperately yearned. Over the next two years, the WBC champion maintained the professionalism and discipline to successfully defend his title four times, with comprehensive points victories over the likes of Yuri Orkis Gamboa, Jorge Linares and Joseph Diaz Jr. Still, the WBC, the lightweight champion of the world, Devin, the dream. But being the hypercritical business that boxing is, Devin Haney could never escape the frequent taunts reminding him of the circumstances in which he acquired his champion status. He hasn't been there. He's a sport brat. He's been given everything. He's been given a belt. And finally now, he's had to feel what it's like. Belts. Whilst absurd in their rationale, the jeers would do very little to dent Haney's dedication to prove his critics wrong. And in a fate designed to help him do so, a series of unexpected events would steer an opportunity of a lifetime right into the path of the young hopeful. A world champion, George Cambosis Jr. and his American opponent, Devin Haney, meet right here for the first time at Marvel Stadium for the winner-takes-all, undisputed, world lightweight champion title. Such was the confidence of Devin Haney that he travelled all the way to Melbourne, Australia to deliver a punch-perfect masterclass in front of 40,000 hostile fans. Devin! The dream. Rarely flustered by Cambosa's attempts to impose himself, Haney dictated proceedings with a blistering jab that reddened the host's face over the course of 12 rounds. He might not be Floyd Mayweather, but there's glimpses, there's flashes of some real quality. And you can see where he's learned his trade. Yeah, no, lovely, lovely, long-range boxing. And with all three judges unanimous in their one-sided scorecards, the American became the division's first undisputed champion since the late Pennell Whitaker in 1990. The universally recognized undisputed lightweight champion, Devin the Dream Hayden. I'm franchise too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll I'm take that. franchise too. Email. Oh, oh, giving his critics fewer and fewer points of contention, Haney was now forcing the industry to respect his status in the sport. And a quick rematch with Cambosas four months later to fulfil his contractual obligations removed all doubt in the brief rivalry with the Australian. And still, Devin, the dream! At 24 years of age, and with 29 fights already at the weight class he began his career, a physically maturing Haney was reaching the end of his lightweight tenure. But the need to cement his legacy in the division required him to make one last attempt to secure an accomplished name on his resume. Despite once being the most acclaimed fighter in not only the lightweight division, but the entire sport itself, Vasily Lomachenko is currently languishing in a forgotten void reserved for vanquished champions. And much like his May the 20th rival, 
He too requires a top-flight opponent to prove his worth in an increasingly evolving landscape of new contenders and superstars. The Takeover! Teofimo Lopez! Just days after being dethroned in an upset loss to Teofimo Lopez, the Ukrainian underwent surgery to repair his right shoulder that had been plagued with injuries for a number of years. And in the summer of 2021, he made his return to the ring against Masayoshi Nakatani to deliver a vintage performance that resulted in a ninth round TKO victory. It is over! Loma is back! Vintage four! The rangy Japanese was a common opponent shared between both Lomachenko and Lopez, serving as the ideal rehearsal to chase down a rematch. He made an example out of Nakatani tonight. But Lopez's departure from the division, as well as the distressing conflict in his native Ukraine, forced Lomachenko into periods of inactivity and exclusion from world title opportunities. Oh, my, oh, my. And despite an impressive 12-round display against Richard Comey, the former champion returned to military service in his country's territorial defense battalion and wouldn't be seen in the ring again until October of the following year. Against Jermaine Ortiz, he would face another tall, rangy opponent and a former sparring partner that was all too familiar with his style. And he gets caught with a counter, but Ortiz exuding a lot of confidence right here in the last minute of round four. And they go. Ortiz proved to be a stern test over the course of 12 rounds, unveiling the harsh reality that the former two-time Olympic gold medalist was visibly in physical decline. 35 years of age, two decades of which involved an intense amateur boxing program, meant that Lomachenko was reserved to showing only flashes of the brilliance that once mystified so many audiences. So it then became more pertinent than ever that his long-term ambition of becoming undisputed be attempted now. How do you feel about Lomachenko saying, whatever you want, let's just get it done? The MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas will provide the setting for this era's most defining lightweight showdown. Two of the division's most accomplished fighters will battle for ultimate supremacy and close a rivalry that very nearly extinguished into the annals of bureaucratic confusion. Like you said, I've been wanting this fight since 2019. I've been begging for it, calling for it. The time has finally came. The youthful enthusiasm of Devin Haney and the veteran-like fortitude of Vasily Lomachenko form part of an encouraging trend of matchups that are catching the public's attention. It's a fight that I actually believe that I'm the better fighter, I'm the better competitor. Bookmakers have tagged the champion as the strong favorite to emerge victorious. But ever present is the chip on his shoulder, which is creating a challenger-like attitude to earn respect that is long overdue. He's a fighter that gives Devin the credit and the validation of being a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. And in a rare generational talent that stands before him, complacency is a virtue that's ill-afforded. Just sensational from Loma! The venerable Vasily Lomachenko looks to hatch one last great performance. The type that many greats before him have unleashed to bedazzle foolhardy hopefuls chasing glory at their expense. The skill, the will, the class of the silly Lomachenko, it has been evident all night long. Whether we see the immortalization of one of the finest fighters in recent times, or the birth of a future pound-for-pound -pound superstar, May 20th may serve as the most important night of their careers.